and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to be painting the National Park from Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. A couple of months ago, someone had tweeted me this picture of the National Park, and it's really vibrant and really beautiful, and I really love all the colors. And I looked at it and I thought, this would make a really good palette knife painting. So I sketched it out in my sketchbook, and um, I had to make up some of the image because the ratio isn't the same, so I had to kind of imagine what was going on outside of what you see in the game through that little window. Um, and then I drew in these guidelines to kind of break it up into pieces, and I can use these guidelines on my canvas. I can measure halfway down my canvas and draw in the middle lines and then cut those in half so I have these nice boxes. That'll help me because as I'm drawing my scene in, I can look at like where this curve ends up, how it kind of overlaps this middle, so I need to take it all the way over to the middle of the canvas. So it'll help me kind of line up my drawing from the paper onto my canvas. And that's going to be my first step, draw in the grid lines and then draw the entire scene. Now, painting or palette knives come in all different shapes, sizes, and materials. These are the four I use most often, um, and this one over here I use basically every time I paint. It's offset, which means it has this angle in it, and this one's not, so you can kind of see the difference there. Um, and I like the offset one because my fingers don't get in the paint when I'm like scooping. I have this little bit of a gap where my fingers are away from the canvas or away from the palette. And normally when I'm using it, I kind of scrape up paint, I can mix paint, and I can kind of just wipe the edges back off onto my palette. That way I'm not ruining any paint brushes by getting paint all up in the bristles. Um, so I use this one all the time. This one I use sometimes, but I don't really like it because it's not offset, but it's a lot bigger of a space to scoop more paint. Um, this one works really good for small detail areas, like if I'm trying to do some of these roots in here, I can use this one really well. Um, and it's also offset. And then this one is good for um, lots of big spaces, but it has these two angles to it, so I can use the big one and the small one for different things. Now you can find palette knives in a lot of different places and check around the paint brushes at your craft store. These two I got at Michael's, and these two I actually got at Daiso, which is a Japanese brand Dollar Tree that I went to out in California. I prefer these metal ones because they're a bit more durable, they're easier to clean, and also they have a bit more flexibility to them. Um, and you want them to have this flex, but um, you don't want to bend it real hard and break it because you can still break it even though it's metal. Um, you want it to be able to do that so you can kind of push on the canvas and give it this nice bend to really push the paint into the surface. Just like if I were using a paintbrush, I'm working from the background into the foreground. So I'm starting with my sky and my clouds. And on my palette for that, I have titanium white, primary yellow, pyrrole orange, and then primary magenta. I have a little bit of cyan to make kind of a deeper magenta color for the shadows, but that's going to be very last. And I'm starting with white because I do want it to be bright white down here. And I'm just using my palette knife to kind of lay down some white here along the very bottom of my sky. So then I'm just gonna take a little bit of this yellow and do the same thing. Just lay it down, use the back of the knife to kind of push it into the canvas. And I'm going to work down into the white a little bit and then back up into the yellow so I have this nice transition between the two. I've noticed a couple things in doing the sky here. Um, you can definitely go back over areas and blend them better even after they've dried. So I had gone back over this area to kind of make it blend better from the white to the light yellow. I also noticed that the chalk shows up under some of these lighter colors. So I erased some of the heavier lines that sat on this hillside. And the next thing I wanna do is for this hill, I'm starting with my lighter colors just like I did for the sky. And I'm going to lay them down um, kind of where they sit. And I'm going to try and keep the direction of my palette knife so they all kind of point up towards the hill like grass. And I can even take the point of my palette knife 
and draw some lines into this paint, kind of carve in that grass texture. So as I lay these down, I'm just going to like kind of flip my knife over and then just scrape in some grass lines. I've noticed it's easier to lay all of the color down in the space I want it to be for the grass. And then once I kind of have the whole thing filled in with this color, then I can go and add the texture. I think it's a lot easier that way and it's still kind of all wet, so if I do it quickly, it won't dry on me. I can go in a few different directions from here. I can start on the path and then this grass and then the bush down in the corner, or I can kind of work on these trees. Now I really want to figure out the exact shadow that goes underneath these trees, so I need to do the tree trunks, but before I do the tree trunks I need to do the leaves first. So um, this one is obviously the one in front and it sits kind of on top of the one back here. So I need to do the further back one first, and they're kind of the same colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the far away one first, keep all of those colors on my palette and then paint this one immediately after. And they each kind of get a little bit of white along the edge here, fade to a light yellow and then into some oranges and then into violet in the deepest part of the shadow. The texture of the leaves is going to be different than the grass where I have all of these little lines in the texture. I want this to kind of be like individual leaves if I think about it that way. So I'm going to kind of just set the paint down in these big pools of paint here on the canvas. With the leaves done, I can work on these tree trunks, and I'm just using a dark brown to kind of fill in all of the branches and the trunks themselves. And then once I'm sort of happy with the coverage of it, I'm going to take the back of the knife and just kind of give it a tree bark texture by going over it very lightly. The arms, I'll just kind of go down the side of them like this, and then down the rest of the trunk to blend them in. kind of the basic texture and basic values of these trees, but I want to push it further. Like the edge of the leaves are really bright with that bright white, the same with the hill over here, so I want to bring that to these tree trunks. So I have this rusty orange color I'm going to put on the left side of each of these trees, and then I'm going to go kind of into a yellow and then into a white. I've started on the path and each side kind of has one of these wood runners all the way along it 
and I started with a lighter color over here just like I've been doing everything else for the hill and then the leaves are kind of lighter on that side and I started to fade it into a medium brown which is burnt sienna um, and then underneath the trees there's a shadow so I lightly drew in where the shadow is going to sit and then I just made it darker underneath those areas. Because I did the rails with the shading, I also need to do the grass. So I've mixed up kind of a dark navy blue to fill in the area I've marked in chalk. Now this first tree also has the bench that sits underneath it. So I kind of extended the shadow to go around that too because that's gonna cast its own shadow. in the base layer for the path and I started with some of my lighter colors um, like I had used in here and the sky and everything else but then I kind of faded it into these sandy brown colors. Now I had planned to kind of just do a basic brown down in this area but I started to run out so I just kind of used some of the other browns I had on my palette from doing the edge of the walkway. Now I wanted to get all that down first so that after it dried I could take my chalk pastel and measure in these very horizontal lines to kind of break up all of these pieces of the path. I also want to take some lighter colors and kind of do some like splotches of these tiles that kind of sit here on the ground. And because of that I also need to do the shadows for the trees here on the ground and then the shadows for those are all done. trying to make this look more like the game but it ended up in kind of a mess. I really liked it before I added the lines where it was kind of just this smooth transition where it kind of looked like dirt and I want to bring that back just because I like how it looked and it worked really well with the palette knife. next thing to work on is the grass that sits inside of the path. I'm just going to do the same thing I did on the hill except work backwards. Start with my darker colors and then work to the lighter ones. That's because these grasses are a bit more defined than the ones back here. Um, so you get things like um, highlights of the lighter colors back in this area um, and some shadows down in this area. So I'm just starting with this periwinkle blue color and I'm going to lay it down flat first and then after I'm just going to do those same lines like I did for the hill.
Now the grass here isn't done yet. Um, it gets a little bit of a shadow where this bush is going to kind of cast it upon the grass here, just like these. And I still have the same like dark greenish blue color that I'm going to put here later, but I want to finish all of this first. Um, and I'm doing the same thing I did for the trees where I'm just taking my palette knife and kind of putting these little petally shapes through the whole thing. And it's the same kind of colors as the tree, it just gets a little bit more gray, a little bit more neutral instead of this deep violet that the trees have. I finished up all of the highlights and it's time to move on to some of the desaturated shadow colors. And the first one is this kind of grayish violet color. And um, I used kind of like my regular violet that I made up from here, but it's very, very saturated. So opposite of violet on the color wheel is yellow. So I just added little bits of yellow and white until I was happy with this color. And now it's a nice color for that first layer that I have. And I'm gonna do kind of the same thing I'm doing, um, filling in with this color, but I want some of these highlight colors to kind of show up, but not too much. So in some places you'll see a lot of this kind of mauve color, and in other places you won't see any. Now there's really kind of two bushes here, this one that sits further back and then one that sits closer that hides the sun curtain. And there's flowers across both bushes. Now the ones that are kind of closer towards the top, I'm going to do white first. But the ones that sit a little further back, which I've marked with X's here, and then the ones that sit on this bush aren't going to have white because they're kind of in shadow so they're not going to get as bright as the ones up top here. I've drawn in the sun kern and I can kind of take the colors a couple different ways. I can kind of go the route of how it would look in sunset, which is kind of brown and that's how it looks in game right here when it's sunset. Or I could kind of take it more in a yellow direction, which is how it actually looks like in a regular daylight. But to fit the scene, I think I'm gonna go with it a little bit more brown, um, kind of like this brown in here, with some of these darker browns to be kind of the streaks on the face. My first color is this Burnt Umber Burnt Sienna mix. And this is going to be my shadow that sits on the sides of the face and then on the edges of each of the points. I finished up all of the flowers um, and I kind of just used some white on the lighter ones and then some light orange on the darker ones to kind of make them look like they have some petals. And it's really hard to see what's going on in the game, like what exact flowers they are. So I kind of just went with how it looks and tried to kind of recreate the feel of it and where the pixels are. Um, now for the eyes of the sun kern, there's no way I can get a perfect circle with the palette knives that I have. I've done a few tests and it just doesn't look very good. And I didn't want to use anything other than a palette knife because that was kind of the point of doing this whole piece. I was going to do it all in a palette knife. But I thought about using something plastic that wasn't a paintbrush. So I'm going to use the end of this Sharpie cap dipped in black paint and then I'm just going to kind of use it to draw a nice circle here on the sun kern.
one here, I just have these last two flowers to fill in, and they're filled in with that dark red orange first, and then once it's dry, I can go ahead and add the violet, and then the swirl through the top. The last two things I have to do are the bench and the two street lights. So I've marked them in with chalk first, and then I'm going to very carefully use a bunch of dark grays and dark browns to fill in kind of the base layers of those. And then once that's dry, I can do like the side of the bench and like the inner part of the light and just slowly work my way through those using one of the tinier knives. I'm just about done, and the last thing I have to do is add shadows for both light post and the bench. And we're done! We have the National Park from Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or put on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.